All right, let's get back to you. What you want to know is if the benefits of CBD outweigh the risks for your arthritic joint pain. Spoiler alert, if you're pregnant, a nursing mother, or the patient is a child, CBD is not an option. It's in your no-fly zone. For the rest of us, let's start out with the benefits. So what's so great about CBD? Look, drugs are chemicals that work in our bodies to overcome disease. Many, if not most drugs, actually began as medicinal plants or after the discovery of receptors on target tissues. So as it turns out, there's a G protein receptor that is specifically activated by CBD. And these receptors are found throughout our bodies. Preclinical studies show that CBD can cause gene expression and reduce inflammation in animal models. In other words, there's very clear and definitive scientific evidence that CBD is an anti-inflammatory. Anti-inflammatory, where have I heard that before? Oh yeah, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, NSAIDs, Aleve and ibuprofen are anti-inflammatory. They're also pain relievers. So anti-inflammatory drugs are pain relievers. CBD is an anti-inflammatory drug, therefore CBD is a pain reliever. Remember when I reviewed that clickbait article about vitamin E? In analyzing it, we went over the pyramid of evidence. I want to return to that concept now because the pyramid is a scientifically valid way to compare various pieces of information. This is actually how doctors stack up studies to form opinions about what to recommend to their patients. And frankly, this is how you should look at new information as well, because the alternative is frankly scientific propaganda. Fraudsters select studies that support their narrative, or even worse, they'll use lower forms of evidence while ignoring or not presenting higher ones that don't make their case. Honestly, it's easier than you think to fall into this trap. Confirmation bias makes us agree with things that agree with us and disagree with things or information that disagree with us. And this all goes on unconsciously. Remember the very tip of the evidence pyramid? That's the strongest form of evidence that outweighs all the others, and that is the systematic review. The best review of the clinical evidence on cannabis products was actually done by an author named Whiting. This is the key paper that the American Academy of Family Physicians, as well as the National Academy of Sciences, considered in their evaluation of CBD. What Whiting found was that the clinical evidence for cannabis products like CBD was shoddy. The type and quality of studies necessary to really answer your question about whether CBD is right for you just wasn't there. Since then, a similar report has come out literally every year, and each year, the reports reach the exact same conclusion. They don't know. We never will, and here's why. In the United States, compounds like CBD that occur in nature, it comes from the hemp plant, are handled differently by the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA. The FDA requires all drugs to show safety and efficacy before coming to market. The process of getting FDA approval for synthetic drugs is what typically generates the kind of data that makes it into systematic reviews at the top of the pyramid. But supplements like CBD, on the other hand, are presumed safe and not investigated unless something goes wrong. So, we just don't have conclusive data about CBD, and we never will. That means the ball goes back into your court. CBD is right for you if the benefits outweigh the risks and there is no better alternative. Well, we just discussed the benefits, and quite frankly, the science is there and the potential benefits are considerable. 
So what exactly are the risks? Like all drugs, CBD has potential side effects. The Mayo Clinic lists several side effects here. Now, thankfully, none of these things is life-threatening, and you can always stop them by not taking the CBD. Another thing to consider is that CBD can indirectly affect the way your body handles other medications. So if you do decide to try CBD, be sure and let your doctor know at your next scheduled visit. And then of course, there's all the legal stuff. I said CBD was taken off the controlled substances list in 2018, but is the bottle you're thinking about taking legal in your state? Almost certainly it is. The CBD Awareness Project has a nice listing state by state that reviews the laws. If you're concerned, you can go over that here. Okay, the last thing besides risks and benefits then is alternatives. What are the alternatives? We have far better evidence for pain relief with NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, and Tylenol than we do for CBD. However, NSAIDs don't do anything for your sleep or anxiety. And NSAIDs have their own issues. When you take them every day, you risk heart attack, stroke, kidney failure, and bleeding ulcers. In their position statement, the National Academy of Family Physicians came out for more research, but stopped short of recommending cannabis products, including CBD. And I actually agree with the Academy that more information really would be nice, but as we discussed, it's not likely to ever be there. At this point, I would go one step further. If you're aware of the side effects and discuss it with your doctor, then CBD is a safe alternative as an adjunct to NSAIDs or a replacement for arthritic pain. Special consideration for CBD is appropriate if you're also having trouble with sleep and or anxiety. And you really should consider taking CBD if you're taking NSAIDs like Aleve or Ibuprofen every day. Maybe give your body a break. Try something else for a month or two. We should always maximize natural healing before turning to pharmaceutical drugs. <laughs>